Hi everyone and welcome to a new video on the CBI channel. In this tutorial series we're developing a full stack application using Python Django as our backend and React.js as a frontend. This is not the first video in this tutorial series. Previously we've already set up our Python Django backend, we've created our React.js frontend, we've enabled page navigation with React Router, and we've created a navbar using Material UI. In the upcoming videos, we're going to focus on CRUD functionality, meaning that we're going to create, read, update, and delete records. And we're going to start by explaining how that logically is going to work. Well, the user will see on the, in the browser uh, the content of a JS file, as you can see on the right-hand side of the screen now. He will fill in the forms on that JS file, and with Axios, we will send that request over to our backend because Axios is used for fetching and sending requests. That request will end up uh, in a URL, which have, we have defined at a URL of PyFile, uh, which serves as kind of our API URL. Um, and the data from that URL is uh, serialized by our serializer. And a serializer takes the data from our front end, which is in the JSON format, um, and transforms it into a format that Python can read and use. So it's kind of the bridge between our front end and our back end. Next, that data, when it is serialized, use it inside of our view, inside of our view.py file, and that data is then sent to our database. And of course, this process works both ways, because if we post a request, it goes all the way from the front end to the back end, but if we want to get some information and display it on the screen, it will go the other way around, all the way from our database to the front end to our JS file. Now, this CRUD process is quite uh, big, so I'm going to split it up into three separate videos. In this first video, we're going to focus on our backend, and that means that we're going to define uh, the structure of our database in our models at PyFile. And next to that, we're going to populate our views at PyFile, create a serializer at PyFile, and URLs at PyFile. In the next video, we're going to uh, use Material UI components to create a nice form layout so the user can, can fill in the information through the browser. And in the last video, we're going to bridge the gap between the front end and the back end, and we're going to use Axios to send the information from our forms to our back end. But as mentioned before, the focus of this video is setting up the back end for the CRUD functionality. And we're going to start off by creating the models for our project and our models at PyFile. Next, we're going to migrate our models so the database actually has that structure. And we're going to register our models in our admin.py file. Following that, we're going to create a user and uh, start our server and check out the models in the admin portal to make sure everything is okay. And after that, we can start creating our views and our URLs using uh, Django view sets. After using the view sets, we are going to create serializers. And finally, I'm going to start the server again and check out the full functionality uh, of what we've built so far. The first thing that we're going to do is defining our models. So we're going to go to our API folder and then to our models.py. We're going to create a small model that's going to track uh, projects. So I'm just going to create a class named project. And that is going to be specified as models.model. And in here, we need to define a number of attributes. Now, the first thing that I want to define in my model is I want to give my projects a name. So that is going to be equal to models.character field. And uh, what I think is important is I want all of my projects to have a unique name. So unique must be true. And I'm going to set the max length of this model to 100, because I don't want to have too much characters there. The next thing that I want to define is a start date. This is going to be equal to models.date field. And I also want to define an end date, because I want to know when the project starts, but also when it ends. Um, I also want to define some comments about the project, because maybe I have something to say about that. So models that car field again. But in this case, it doesn't need to be unique, but I do want to uh, specify that the max length is 500, because I don't want to have it too big. And I'm going to say that blank can be true and null can also be true, because this is not a mandatory field. You can just 
take it or leave it. I also want to define a status. And in this example, I'm just going to make status a uh, character field. So I'm going to here again, remove this one and give it a max length of 100. Now the last thing that I also want to do is I want to know when a certain project has been uh, created. Um, and for that, I'm going to say models that date time field. And then we can specify auto now add is equal to true. And what this does is that at the moment that a row gets created, it automatically adds the date of creation in there. And we can do a similar thing for modified. And to do that, we models again the date time field. And then we need to specify auto now is true. And auto now, uh, make sure that whenever this row gets uh, modified, uh, it will take the date stamp and it will put it in our database. The last thing we need to do is we need to define what we are going to call this when we uh, yeah, get our model. So we need to do define string, then self, and then we need to return self that name. And I need some this. And this is going to make sure that we see the name whenever we refer to a project instead of the ID. And of course, you can make this as complex as you want. You can add fields that are foreign keys. You can add uh, multiple choice fields and all of that stuff. Uh, but it's a little bit more advanced. And this is just a very basic tutorial. So I'm going to leave that for now. If you want me to explain how that works, feel free to leave a comment or, or let me know. And then I can uh, take a look whether that is something I can do for you guys. Now we have created our model called project, but we also need to make sure that that model is applied to our database. And to do that, we're going to start up our terminal. And I need to cd into my backend folder and I need to activate my virtual environment. So then scripts slash activate. And now I can say python manage.py make migrations. All right, this will create the model called project and python manage.py migrate. Now, one thing that I do want to tell you guys, I had a slight problem uh, when I tried this originally. And in your settings.py file, make sure that in your course allowed origins, you remove this trailing slash. Just make sure that you that it doesn't end on the trailing slash. Because I have had that problem before. Uh, just make sure that that is the case. And you can see right here that our models are now applied. Now, of course, um, I also want to see my model and make sure that everything is okay. And to do that, I'm going to register it inside of my admin.py file. So on the top here, you need to import your models. So you're going to say from that models import all. And what you can then do is you can say admin.site.register. And then you specify the name of your model. In this case, it's project. And what this does is this makes sure that when you start your server and go to slash admin, that this model is registered there and that you can actually create uh, records over there. Um, the only thing is we can only go to that admin portal once we have created a user. So let's do that right now. On the bottom on my terminal right here, I'm going to say um, Python manage.py create super user. It's going to ask me for my username and it's going to say that I am user one. Apparently I've already done this before. User two. I'm just going to say user two at email.com. <clears throat> Password I'll just do testing three two one and again testing three two one. And now it's created successfully. And now we can start our server by saying Python manage that Python server and check out the admin portal. So we are back in our server and to get to the admin portal, we need to do a slash admin. So over here, slash admin. And this will bring us, uh, normally you need to log in, but I've already done it before. But uh, you need to log in and then you get to this user interface. Um, and you can see right here that my projects model has been uh, yeah, uploaded here. And when we click on it, you can see that we have, don't have any projects right here, but we can add a project already and say that this is project one. We have a start date of today and an end date of today. Comments, uh, no comments. And the status, I can say it is uh, open. And I can save that 
and now it is inside of my database. So it's nice to know that we know that um, yeah, our changes in our models at file have been applied to our database and we can create records. So our models are now ready. And the next thing that we want to do is create uh, some views and some URLs so we can uh, create requests to add data to our database um, and also to update things, to delete things and get all that functionality working. And we're going to use Django view sets to achieve that. And I'm right now on the documentation of Django REST framework. And here you can see the, uh, the topic of view sets. And the advantage of view sets, opposed to using your normal views and URLs, is that you get a lot of things out of the box. And uh, one of the examples here below shows it quite well. You can have one view. So in this case, it's user view set. But um, yeah, we, we can define it as our project view set. And within this one view, we can uh, do all of the stuff that we need to do. So we can use, uh, we can define a function called list, which will uh, generate a list of all of the records that we need. We can create records by adding code here. We can retrieve records, update them, do a partial update, or even uh, delete records by using destroy. And the advantage of this is that it's all in one place, which makes it really easy. And another advantage is that we're going to use the uh, router from Django REST framework to automatically create URLs for all of these things. So instead of us manually typing in um, all of the URLs that we want to use, we can let Django do that for all of these different functions inside of this view set. So let's start by doing that inside of our view set by file. And the first thing we need to do is actually import the view sets. So we're going to say from REST framework, import view sets. And we're also going to import permissions because in our view set, we need to define the permissions for that view set. And we can create a view set by simply specifying a class-based view by saying class is equal to project view set. And within these parentheses, we can specify that it's view sets dot view set with a capital right there. All right. Now, within these uh, view sets, we need to specify two things. First thing we need to specify are the permission classes. And the permission classes is going to be equal to permissions. And that is what we import here on the top. And I'm going to uh, do allow any. Uh, we don't have any login functionality right now, so I'm very comfortable with just having anyone logging in on that particular one. Next thing that we need next to our permission classes is we need to define a query set because we can define one query set for all of the different um, dev functions that we're going to define. Um, in this case, we need to import our models because we've just defined those uh, before. So we say from that models import. I'm just going to import all of them. And in our query set, we're going to define project.objects.all. Okay. And now underneath our project view set, we can define which functions that we are uh, going to be using in the end. And in this case, for the sake of simplicity, I am just going to go to my uh, documentation and I'm going to just copy all of them. I don't think that I will use all of them, but I'm just going to copy all of them for now. And I'll paste them in here. And I know the partial update I'm definitely not going to be using. But list, create, retrieve, update, and destroy could be that we use uh, either of those. So for now, I'm going to leave it like this. So let's save it. Next thing that we need to do is we need to create a URL for these, uh, for these things. Uh, because yeah, normally what you would do for each of these view sets or for each of the functions, you need to go to a URLs file and you need to define the path and specify when you have primary key. Uh, and that's quite, quite hard, but we're going to do it completely different. So I'm just going to comment out my current uh, URLs and we're going to start by importing something. So from rest framework dot routers, I'm going to import the default router. And then I'm going to state that a router is equal to default router. And don't forget these brackets right here, it's quite important. And now below this router, we can uh, register different routes. So I'm gonna do router.register. 
And in here, we need to specify, as you can see already here, the prefix, which is uh, the base URL, a view set, which is going to be our project, and then a base name. So I'm going to say that the prefix is going to be project. Our view set is going to be our project view set. And the base name, I'm just going to set it equal to project as well. And now um, we still need to link what's happening here to our URL patterns, because that's also what is expected from our, uh, from our main URLs file here. So I'm going to say that our URL patterns is going to be equal to router.urls. And we're going to save this. And this should do the trick for us. Uh, and let's quickly check whether this does what we expect. So we're back in our server and still on the admin portal right here. And we can check the URLs that have been defined for us by just simply specifying a path that we know does not exist. Because by doing that, you will see that you get uh, the page not found. Uh, and it's going to specify, well, these are the URLs that do exist. And you can already see right here that it's defined a number of uh, routes for us. So we have uh, for project list, we have a normal um, um, route, it just takes project. But we also have here a number of items that define project and our primary key. So uh, instead of us defining all of these ourselves, it has already done that for us, which is uh, very convenient. So in essence, what we've now done is in our urls.py, we have defined the uh, URLs of our APIs that we're going to be uh, yeah, that we're going to be exchanging between the front end and the back end. And we've also um, done the views because in this views we're going to uh, yeah make sure that we that make sure that we know down what we want to send to the front end or what we want to send from the front end to the back end. But the thing that is missing is the serializer because that serializer is going to be the bridge between translating the back end to the front end. So it's a really important part. Um, and we're going to add that now. So in my API folder right here, I'm going to add a new file called serializers.py. And in here, we're going to define the serializer for project. And similar to the previous part, we're going to start with an import. So we're going to say from rest framework import serializers. There we go. And we're also going to import, um, I'm just going to say from that models import all because we will need our model here as well. And now we can define our serializer. And this is going to be quite easy. So we again say class. We're going to call this project serializer. And in here we define serializers.serializer. And uh, in here we need to specify class meta. And this is going to request a few uh, pieces of information from us. The first thing I was going to ask is our model. And our model is going to be equal to project because that is the model that we're doing this for. Next up, it's going to request us the fields that we're going to uh, expect. Send from the front end to the back end and from the back end to the front end. And I'm just going to select all of the fields that I have right here. But I don't want to send the created or modified ones because those are going to be populated automatically. So just for illustration purposes, I'm going to put these right here. So the fields that we are going to be expecting are name, we're going to be expecting start date, end date, and comments, and it's the last one also, status. All right. And just like this, our serializer is complete for now. And it appears I made a small mistake in my serializers because we're not going to do serializer at serializer, but we're going to do serializers dot model serializer. So our serializers are now complete. So it's now time to add these serializers to our views to Python. Because by doing that, we will have the translation between our front end and our back end. And we can actually define what needs to happen when we receive data from the front end or when we need to pass data from the front end to the back end. So we're going to go to our views at file. And one of the first things that we're going to do is we're going to make two imports. First, 
from that serializers we're going to import everything and this is where of course our project serializer lives and the next thing that i'm going to do is i need to import response so i'm going to say from rest framework dot response import response okay now we can go and we can uh, populate these functions one by one and let's start with our overarching function because on the top we need to define our serializer and i'm going to say that serializer is equal to project serializer now we can populate all of these functions so that it does what we expect it to do whenever uh, yeah, we get data so first things first we're going to define our list and our list is going to give us just a long list of all of the projects that we have inside of our database and one small change, serializer actually needs to be serializer class. So now let's populate our dev list. First thing we need to define is our query set. Now we have already done this on the top here. So I'm just going to say self dot query set, which is just going to refer to this one. Next up, I'm going to define our serializer. And that is again, just going to be easy because we do self dot serializer class and open brackets and i'm going to say that i want to take a look at my query set and many is going to be equal to true because we expect many records and of course we have now defined what we want to see because we want to see this query set using this serializer but we also need to return something because what are we going to see on the screen well i want to return a response I want to see serializer.data. So it's going to return the data to us when we go to the URL for that list. And I can actually show you what the output is by going into our project right now. So let's take a look. So I'm back at my homepage right now. As you can see, it has changed a little bit because it says that we are now in our API root. And in there, you can see that one of our roots is project, and that is equal to localhost 8000 slash project. And when we click on that, we go to the project one right here. And you can see that by adding the serializer and referring to our query set, this URL will now retrieve um, the name of our project, the start date, the end date, the comments, and the status. And this is, of course, the fields that we specified inside of our serializer. The next thing that we can also already define, since it's quite a basic uh, tutorial, is the create, retrieve, update, and destroy. Because we can do a lot with just a few lines of code. So in our code under create, we again are going to define our serializer. And this is going to be the same as before, it's self.serializer class. But in here, we're going to define that data is equal to request.data. The next thing that we want to do is we want to validate whether our uh, serializer is valid. It's because you know that when you uh, just use Django and you submit a form, you need to also validate if your form is correct. Here we're doing the same but for the serializer. So we say if serializer dot is valid, and we're going to go on and we say, well, everything is fine. So we do serializer.save. And what I want to return again is the response. So I want to return a response of serializer.data because, yeah, again, I want to see what has been done. Uh, if this is not the case, I want to return an error or some kind of a notification that it's not going well. So in here, we're going to do again return response. But we're going to return serializer that errors, which will just provide us with all the errors, and we're going to give it a status of 404, sorry, 400, and this should be good. So let's also do this for the rest. So in here for retrieve, it's again going to be a little bit different. We're going to define project, and we're going to say self dot query set dot get, and in here we are going to say pk is equal to pk, and what does this do? It looks at our query set, and it's right here, project object at all, and it's going to apply a dot get statement where the primary key of my project um, uh, model needs to be the same as the primary key in the URL. 
So if we specify URL as one, it will retrieve the row with ID one. The next thing is gonna be the same as before. Um, we need to define a serializer and our serializer is self.serializer class. But in here, we're going to specify project uh, because this gets our query set. And we are again going to return a response and it is going to be equal to serializer.data. Now the update one is going to be a little bit of a merge between the create and a retrieve because we are going to do exactly the same as with create, but the difference is that we're going to do that for one particular project. So again here, I'm going to define my project, which is going to be the same. It's going to be determined by self.querySet.get, where the primary key is equal to the primary key, because we are getting one row that we are going to update. Next, we want to get the serializer, and the serializer is going to be equal, again, to self.serializer class. And in there, I'm going to define my project but also um, the data, so data request that data, because we want to take into account our project, but it could be that we have new information coming in from data request that data. Now, we again need to check the same thing as here, so I'm just gonna copy this because it's gonna be the same. Um, we need to say if serializer is valid, then return the response uh, of saving it, um, and then returning the data, otherwise I want to see the errors. And the destroy one is gonna be uh, quite similar as well, because again, and I'm just gonna copy it over, we're gonna be looking for one project based on a primary key. And if we have found the one, we say project.delete. And after that, I'm going to return a response. Um, and the response is gonna be equal to status is 204. And this should do all of the stuff that we want to do. So let's check it out. Uh, I've just started my server and I'm here in project. And you can now see that on the bottom, I have the option to add a project. So I can say project three, I'm gonna go uh, start date of uh, the 14th of October and then end date of the 17th of October. Comments is gonna be comments and the status is gonna be completed. And if I post this one, you will see that we uh, yeah, posted it right here with the status of 200, which is okay. And if we now change the URL, and I say that I want to go to uh, number three, because I believe the ID of this one will be three, then you can see that we also are getting to the details. Uh, so we're retrieving project three, and we can right here, we can update it. So I can say comments updated. And if I put this, you can see that it has successfully updated my data. And what I can also do is I can click on delete. And if I delete it, I'm sure I want to delete this. Mm -hmm. Yes, I want to delete it. And now we get the status 204, what we also defined. So it looks like everything that we are doing inside of our um, code is working the way that we expect. And what we need to do in the next tutorial series is define some forms uh, in our front end using RegJS and make sure that the right information is inputted to these URLs so that our data is added into our database. For now, I want to thank you very much for watching this video. If you have any comments, please let me know below and like the video if you've enjoyed it. In the next videos, we will first continue on creating forms using Material UI components. And thereafter, we're going to work with Axios and React Hooks form to make sure that the data we put in those forms ends up in our backend. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.